Let's talk about Call of Duty for a bit. my friends, I am the Mighty Mander, and welcome back to uh, another, like, thoughts video. Um, I know I said a while back that I wasn't gonna do this for games that had been just released, like new release AAA games, but actually I feel like that's a pretty good uh, use of this templated video. So I'm gonna talk about today um, a game that has not exactly been well received in comparison to the other entries in its franchise. I'm gonna talk about Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Uh, mostly the campaign, because when it comes to Call of Duty, that's what I personally enjoy the most. Uh, I don't really enjoy Call of Duty multiplayer anymore. I haven't since Black Ops 2. No, Advanced Warfare. I loved Advanced Warfare's multiplayer just because I was really good at it. That first starting assault rifle was just OP as fuck. Today I'm going to talk about Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. What I like about that campaign, what I don't like about the campaign, and where I think it fits into Call of Duty, and whether or not I think Call of Duty has any steam left. Because that's been a really, really big question over the past uh, couple years, is whether the franchise has any steam left at all, or whether it's on its way out. So, we're gonna get right into that. So, I enjoyed this campaign more than I thought I would. Um, it's, it's no Modern Warfare, it's no Modern Warfare 2, those are my favorite campaigns. And, you know, there have been some really, really cool Call of Duty campaigns in the past. But I enjoyed it more than, say, the campaign for Advanced Warfare, or Black Ops 2. Um, you know, so, and those are some of my favorite COD games in recent memory. So this campaign really was, it, it wasn't bad. It was pretty impressive. I appreciate the steps that this campaign took to, to actually help it stand out from other Call of Duty games. Um, instead of just being a grunt who's forced into a position of valor, I guess, you know, as that tends to happen, where you just put into extraordinary circumstances and forced to fight your way out, uh, you, you, that's still pretty much how it happens, but it makes you the captain of a ship instead of just a grunt. So instead of uh, being entirely linear, it allows you to choose your path in a couple different ways. Inconsequential though it may be to the main campaign. Yeah, with the, with, the, with the mission selection map and the going to different places around the solar system and everything like that, it actually gave me a little bit of a vibe of Mass Effect, which just might be part of the reason why I enjoyed it so much. That being said though, the game is still full, I mean full, of like Call of Duty-isms. And you know the kinds I mean, you know, the military one-liners, the, the Michael Bay spectacle moments where there's just a whole fuck ton of things happening on screen and it's just trying to make you go, wow, look at all the things that we can render in computer generated game engine, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of army movie one-liners. There are so many one-liners in this fucking campaign. <laughs> I feel like the way they approach the side missions means that, uh, uh, a lot of them sort of blend together, they don't really distinguish themselves from one another, um, and that, that is primarily with the side missions. You know, the aerial combat missions, they all feel the same, you're just flying around in a spaceship shooting some dudes. Um, the ship takedowns, most of them are the same, you infiltrate a ship, fight your way through it, kill the captain, and then usually do some aerial combat afterwards. These side missions are interspersed throughout main campaign missions, so main story missions, the ones with the, with the huge set piece moments that really advance the story forwards. Um, these, these missions are, uh, aside from a few really notable side missions, uh, these, these are the real draw of the campaign. You know, those are like the, the they're, they're what gets you through the campaign. They're, they're not just a side mission. Some of these missions really stand out as something really cool. The one that comes to my mind immediately is the first mission off of Earth, besides the introduction. Um, the one where you, uh, where your squad has to go to the moon and take back uh, the Earth spaceport on the moon from the SDF or whatever the fuck it was. And, and this this mission is just fucking awesome. Like the entrance, just where you like open the door and it's like you're in a drop zone, but instead of being in a war zone on Earth, you're on the fucking moon and it, you're you're dropping in in fucking uh, like like moon buggy transport troops, like that kind of shit. And it's just so awesome. You get to fight your way across the moon's surface, and there's like a couple really really cool. Uh, mechanics in that mission where it's like if you shoot out a window it'll it'll suck people out and uh, and then it'll close like a shutter allowing you to move forward uh, just just ve a very cool mission very cool use of the space setting and um, uh, just a really really cool I wish that the rest of the campaign was like that because that really drew me in it was probably what made me like the rest of the campaign just because that mission was so so incredible 
Um, another notable side mission, this one is actually, this is probably my favorite side mission, was uh, one called Operation Deep Execute, where you uh, disguise yourself as an enemy soldier, sneak through the ship, and you have to kill three high value targets at one time. It just makes you, it's another one of those just, just uh, missions that just makes you feel like a badass. Like, you just do something incredible, and um, yeah, it just feels really, really great. Another really notable thing about the campaign is that it's impressive how grounded the campaign feels in reality, especially considering the, the crazy extravagant setting. It feels more plausible, like, I mean, scientifically and physically, I guess, than the campaigns of either Advanced Warfare or Black Ops 3, because, you know, Advanced Warfare was all about, like, the, the exosuits and, like, uh, tyrannical shit on Earth with Kevin Spacey. I don't remember. Kevin Spacey was basically Hitler in that game. I don't remember exactly what was going on. But, uh... Uh, or the campaign of Black Ops 3, which I didn't finish because it was too, it was just I, I wasn't that interested. But it was um, all about like uh, cybernetic enhancements and like neural implants and all that shit, all the the weird uh, cyber shit. It, it this feels more plausible than that, which is weird because off the top of my head, I don't know if they ever mention what year this game takes place in. You know, you don't you don't play as some Christ figure space warrior like you do in say Mass Effect, where Shepard is like the chosen one. There's none of really that shit. I mean, you do play as someone who's forced into a position of authority and has to deal with it, which is a common theme in a lot of movies and games and TV shows and all over the place. But, um, it, you know, it's, 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 it's like, unlike other sci-fi games, you, this guy, he's just, a, like, uh, the guy Reyes that you play as, he's just a Navy pilot. He's just a normal-ass Navy pilot, except instead of flying through the skies of Earth, he's flying through space. And, I mean, that feels okay to me. I mean, it might just be because I really love space and I love the, the sci-fi genre, but that just felt like it felt okay to me. Like when, um, yeah, that that felt that felt perfectly fine to me. So that being said, I feel like the the um, you know to put it lightly, adverse reaction to the trailer when it was first dropped was a little bit undue because people like immediately when it was announced, and people love to do this when games are announced, but like they love to just draw their conclusions immediately. A lot of people do that. I mean, I'm not I'm not generalizing. You know, I'm not calling out you specifically. This is just a trend that I feel like. I can safely say that a lot of people have noticed on YouTube, especially. But people immediately mark this as the definitive point where, where COD went off the rails. It's like, oh, nope, this is, this is it. No more, like, oh, it's fucking jump the shark, we're in space, it's bullshit, Call of Duty's terrible now, like that kind of thing, you know what I mean? But, but this, is, this game is not Call of Duty going off the rails. This game is still Call of Duty. It feels exactly the same. They, like, they, yeah. And honestly, I don't think that's a bad thing. It, it feels different enough where it's something relatively new in terms of Call of Duty, as new as Call of Duty can get, because I will admit that all the games are exactly the same. But that's not a bad thing. It's Call of Duty. It's familiar. It's fun. It's a blockbuster. It's just in space now. That being said, of course, this game is not without its problems. Uh, the characters in the game are uh, hopelessly flat. There's really not any really distinct characters in this game. Um, not necessarily due to their performances, because Call of Duty always gets really talented uh, voice actors and performance actors. Uh, the characters in the game are pretty flat, and that's not necessarily due to the strength of their performances, because their performances are perfectly passable. You know, there's no there's no real stinkers in terms of the acting. The acting is really good, as, as it always is in a Call of Duty game. But it's mostly due to the writing and um, the, the motivations of the characters. Like I said, the game is just full of those military one-liners, and after a while, they just get so old. Like, there's only so many times where you can hear, like, you know, Semper Fi, or, like, uh, you know, Hell or High Water, or anything, like, Come What May, that kind of bullshit, just like those, those, oh, it's just, it gets annoying after a while. In terms of entertainment, I'm not shitting on the military or anything. Uh, not many of the characters have distinct personalities, you know? Some of them only really serve some characters really only serve to have a dramatic death and teach a heavy-handed lesson about authority and sacrifice. You know, I commend this game for picking a couple of core themes and sticking with them throughout the entire thing, but eventually, you know, when you're just being told the same thing over and over and over again in the same way every single time, it's just, it gets a little old, you know? It, 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 at some point, the message becomes so, like, just, you become inundated with this and it just, it, it, it's not effective anymore, you know? But overall, I mean, this campaign, it's fun, it's a romp, it's, it's, it's Saturday night blockbuster entertainment, you know? It's, it's, it's fun, and it's cool to look at. And I feel like that's what Call of Duty has always been meant to be. It's never tried 
like especially in recent years, it's never really tried to push the medium forward like it did so many years ago. It's just, now it's just fun and cool to look at, which Infinite Warfare definitely is. You know, it's kind of a shame that this is where Call of Duty is in relation to where it was so many years ago when it was just, when it was the daddy, you know, it was the big thing. But, uh, you know, it's a little bit of a shame, but that doesn't mean that this campaign isn't fun. And I haven't played the multiplayer, I really have no interest, so if that's where you guys are looking to, uh, find your analysis of Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, I suggest you look elsewhere. But, uh, after you turn off this video, of course. In terms of a multiplayer game, though, I'd choose Modern Warfare Remastered any day, and in my personal opinion, at least, that game is just a far superior multiplayer experience. And as for Zombies in Spaceland, I dig the aesthetic. It, it's, it's not... I haven't played that much into it, I've never been huge into the zombies. I can play it with a couple friends and have a lot of fun, but uh, I've never been into, you know, exploring the map, finding the easter egg, the uncovering the story, anything like that. Um, People make fun of zombies in Spaceland for being whacked out, but zombies has been whacked out for a while now, so I don't really think that's that's uh, anything anything really of note. Um, but it, it's kind of cool that they went they 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 came up with this unique aesthetic and ran with it. You know, they they didn't take themselves too seriously. They just went all out with this crazy aesthetic, and uh, it looks like it could be pretty fun. So, with that being said, I thought Call of Duty Infinite Warfare's campaign was a lot of fun. What did you think of it? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, be sure to leave me a like. And if you watch this video and it's the first time you're seeing me and you haven't had enough of my stupid face yet, then be sure to subscribe so you can see more. I've got another Call of Duty video coming out shortly. It'll be a little different than this one. I think you guys will really enjoy it. But anyways, with all that being said, I have been the Mighty Mander, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, my friends.